One of the things we need to be able to do with a graph is to find the shortest path through it. All other things being equal, we usually want to drive the shortest distance, take the fewest flights, or use the fewest communication links that are required to traverse a graph. Let's start by looking at an example of finding the shortest path from a source vertex in an unweighted graph, that is, one where every edge is counted simply as an edge, not as an edge of a particular distance, to any other vertex in the graph. One way to do this is the algorithm being displayed now. In this algorithm, we start by assuming the distance from the source to any other vertex is infinite. We also mark each vertex as not having been looked at yet. Please note that we're showing all of these properties as fields of the vertices to keep the pseudocode simple, but in reality, we'd store a table of distances, paths, and done flags separately from the vertices, so that we could ask questions about shortest paths from various starting vertices. Once we've initialized our table, we start from the source vertex, looking at all of its neighbors and setting their distances to 1, then looking at each of those vertices in turn, looking at their neighbors, etc., until we've considered all the vertices in the graph. By only considering vertices that are the same distance away from the source, we expand the search for vertex depths and growing concentric rings. This is called a breadth-first search, and it stands in contrast to the depth-first searches that we've been using for things like tree traversals. Let's take a look at a visualization of this algorithm. Here, we're using an undirected graph, but the same algorithm would apply in a directed graph. First, we consider the starting vertex with a depth of 0 and look at each of its neighbors. We set the distance for each neighbor to 1 and set the path to the neighbor itself. This means that, to get to vertex 2 or 5, we can move directly to vertex 2 or 5. Once we've considered all the neighbors, we can mark the source vertex as done and move on to vertices with a depth of 1. We consider each of these in turn, ignoring any vertices that we've already finished with, in this case, vertex 1. We carry on considering vertices of depth 2, 3, 4, and finally 5, at which point we've finished exploring the whole graph. What we're left with is a table that tells us how far away every vertex is from a chosen source, and how we could get to any vertex via the shortest path, one vertex at a time. If we add weights to the edges, we end up with Dijkstra's algorithm for computing shortest paths. This algorithm assumes that we can keep track of how many vertices haven't been completed yet, pretty straightforward, and that we can select the undone vertex with the smallest distance. Then, the only remaining change is that we need to update a neighboring vertex's path if its distance is not necessarily infinite, but just greater than the distances of the current vertex and the current edge combined. We'll talk about the analysis of these algorithms next week. For now, we'll work on implementing them correctly.